For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight. I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under my body's subjection. There's a prize ultimate of all the world. It's better than the world. It's a prize obtained at a place called Calvary. It's a prize that God has won. God began to raise from his heavenly throne. Yes. And he came down unto this miserable, sin-cursed world, born in a manger. And he ran that life all the way to Calvary's hill. And he went to Calvary because we are sinners. He went to Calvary because we're going to die. The wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is nothing better to please God. There is nothing better to be blessed by God but by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will save your soul. Death is imminent. We all run this thing in the world called a race. Some people run a worldly race. Some people run a race set by God. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them. Tell them about the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered according to the scriptures. He died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The fact is that you cannot do nothing. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And it's so great to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so wonderful to have Jesus Christ as your Savior. For your name is written down the Lamb's Book of Life. And when your name is written down that book, you have reservations set in heaven. And those names are written by the blood of Jesus Christ. Those names are set by the finished work, by the merit of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Only way to get to heaven, the only way to get your name into that book, the only way to get before God is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. God will set no other payment. God will set no other work but the finished work of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now you got to be careful because the Bible speaks about another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. And if you got the another and you don't have the one set by God, approved by God, in your religious works, in your I'm a good person works, you may wake up in hell thinking, hey, what happened? You were deceived. And you can be deceived by Satan. Satan can lead you off into a different Jesus that's not the Jesus set by God. You got to examine yourself. You got to find out what am I believing in? Is it what the Bible says? Is it what the King James Bible says? I saw in a Bible this week that God, Jesus Christ, was replaced with water. Water was the second member of the Trinity. Baptism is what they're saying, and baptism can't save you. That just gets you wet. Oh, I'm a, I'm a member of this church. I'm a deacon of this church. I'm the pastor of this church. And God will say, so what? What about my son? What about the one that suffered and died that you may have eternal life? What about me? God is Jesus and Jesus is God. You think you are better than God's son. And when you say, well, I do this, I do that. But what did Christ Jesus do? He suffered according to the scriptures. He was 
beaten, he was bruised, he had his beard plugged, he was spitted upon, his back was ripped open by a cat of nine tails. Do if you love Jesus. Thank you, sir. And all that misery, all that pain upon Jesus was written and prescribed by the Holy Scriptures. And he, buried, and he was buried after he died. That's what you do with any dead body. You bury it. Get rid of it. It's going to stink. And yet, three days and three nights later, as the prophet Jonah was in that whale three days and three nights, up from the grave he arose, the rock rolled away, and the angels proclaimed, He is not here. He is risen. According to the scriptures. Now if you are worshiping any man or woman, male or female, if you were to check their grave, they are still there. They have not risen from the grave. And they have not died yet. When they die, they will remain in that ground because they have no power of death. They have no power of life that is only given to the Son of God, who is God, Jesus Christ. That is the one you're to put your faith in. That is the one that you're to put your heart in. That is where with the heart man believes on the righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. There is no other. And Jesus Christ will not leave his post of salvation. Jesus Christ is not ever going to cancel out opportunity for salvation for those who want to believe. Jesus Christ will never turn you away if you want to believe. If you will have any doubt, any source of searching for God, Jesus is there ready for you to come. The Bible says in first I mean in Isaiah chapter one verse eighteen. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. But you got to come to God as a sinner that you are. All have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you are a sinner. That goes back to our, our grandparents, Adam and Eve. And yet it's passed on to us. And what are we going to do about it? And what are we going to do about the sins of our grandparents? It's not a pill. It's not a prescription. What we can do about our sin from our grandparents is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That is the only means. That is the only way to believe on one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life if you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you get the indwelling Holy Spirit that dwells in you with love, joy, peace, and even in tribulation and trouble. Salvation will not end your tribulation. Getting saved will not end your trials and troubles here on this earth will probably only add their due. But, to have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, to set reservations to get to heaven when you die, and that is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life by your faith, by your belief. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I am not talking about a religion. I am not talking about a church. I am not talking about what you can do. You can't do nothing. It has already been done by Jesus Christ, who is God. 
There's only one may, way for you to be saved. There is only one way for you to be right with God the Father. And it's not religion, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ the Blessed. Jesus Christ who is God. That is no other way, no other person but Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And death is coming for you. Again, the wages of sin is death. And there's one problem. We do not know when that death is coming. We don't know if it's going to happen right now, any moment. And it can. You could be right here, right now, and boom, you could drop. And drop off into eternity. And without Jesus Christ, you will drop into hell. And if you are saved and you die, you are absent from the body, present with the Lord. We have a race to run. And in that race that God has given humans, when they have a race or a marathon, there's a table or something set up that the runners can come and grab a cup full of water. Or they can grab a bottle of water during their race. And when you've got this earthly race that you're running in this world, there is a place God has set the water of life. And in your race, you are to reach out and grab and receive that water of life and drink of eternal life by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that saveth our souls. And that's refreshing. And you got to continue your race. When you grab that water in a race, you don't stop and then sit down. Many do. But you grab your water, you drink your water, and you go forth running. But now you have another heavenly purpose for your run. You would run for uh, diabetes. You would run for heart attacks. You would run for children. But now once you're drinking the water of Jesus Christ, the water of life, you have a life to run through Jesus. And Jesus would tell you now, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. Instead of healing cancer, instead of helping the homeless, you would tell them about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that they may attain eternal life. You can run for all the food for the homeless and make them fat and jolly and happy and yet they will die and burn in hell without Jesus. You can give all the money to cancer research and research and yet if they were to die in their cancer without Jesus Christ they would burn in hell for eternity. There's a situation that is more deadlier than cancer. There is a situation more worse than life itself. It is we're going to die. And without Jesus Christ you will enter into a place called hell and you will burn for eternity for not receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Men go into hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. Though we are all sinners, we have all lied. We have all taken something that's not ours. Our thoughts are not clean. That makes us, that constitutes us as sinners. As sinners, we've got to do something with our sins before we die. You can die in your sins and end up in hell paying for those sins for all eternity by hell's flame. Or you can put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and have him pay for that penalty of sin. Make that sin debt paid by him and you get to go to God. You get to go to heaven. You get eternal life with your creator, your savior forever. Resting upon the finished work of what Jesus has done. And not what you can do. And it's not what we can do. The Bible says, not of works, least any man boast. We're not going to go to heaven and lift up mankind. 
We're going to go to heaven and we're going to worship the Creator, the Savior, the one in one, God, Jesus Christ. All in all. And if you choose to reject the Gospel, if you choose not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will choose to reject you. You see, it is a choice. There is an election. In order to become God's elect, you've got to come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I want to believe on you. I want to be saved by the gospel and God will choose you. God will allow you into his heavenly abode by his son and only by his son, Jesus Christ. There is no predetermined during the foundations of the world that God said this man will be saved and that man will not be saved. That is nowhere in the scriptures. Man is given a free choice. Adam, don't eat that fruit. And Adam disobeyed. And here we are with the consequences. 2018, April 21st, man, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You have a choice. And the choice is yours. It cannot be made by me. It cannot be made by your parents. It cannot be made by your spouse. It has to be made by your heart. Your heart choosing to receive or to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's all about Jesus. And there is no other. Jesus said, my words, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. In the four years we've been here, the Word of God has prevailed, thanks to God and Jesus. And every opportunity allowed by God, are we able to come here and preach this same Jesus? This same Gospel that Jesus suffered and died according to the Scriptures. It has not been changed. And he was buried. And three days and three nights later, he arose from the grave victorious according to the scriptures. And the scriptures say about Jesus that he is seated on the right hand of the Father today and in power. There is no prophet today seated at the right hand of the Father. There is no man save the man Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father today. There is no woman at the right hand of God today but Christ Jesus. God in God, all God and all human. Who suffered and died because there is no other way. There was no other way for man to be saved by God. There is no way of walking up to God and saying, look how good I am, God, when the Bible says there is none that doeth good. Well, God, look how right I am. When God says the only righteousness that I see is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God, look at my religion. And God says there is no such thing as religion up here. You see, there is no Baptist in heaven. There are no Catholics in heaven. There are for sure no Jehovah Witnesses in heaven. There are only Christians in heaven. And the only way, the only way you can be a Christian is to put your faith and your trust of your heart upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's a Christian. 
when the media proclaims that this church is Christian. Friends, that's fake news according to the Bible because the Bible says Christians were first called Christians not in Italy but in Antioch. Acts. And Christians, the name Christian is given to a title of group of people who live Christ-like, who follows their leader in all merit and term and life, who try to live clean, who tries to do what Jesus Christ has done. That's a Christian. And the fact is with your religion, whatever you believe outside of what God says to believe, Jesus records to us in the Gospel of Matthew, with your religion, the part for me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But God, didn't I burn candles? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Lord, didn't the ancient Bible I said this prayer to get the Tootsie Roll? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, Baptist, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Lord, God, by the only testimony of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of peace. See, you can't come to God with cash, check, works, and religion and expect to be okay. Not with the finished work of Jesus. It's not okay. It's not okay when Jesus says, I am the way. So don't come to God with another way. The scriptures say that Jesus said he is the way. That's simple. Well, God, I'm an atheist. That's, that's a way. It's not a proof. Oh, God, I'm just not sure. I'm agnostic. That's not the way. It's not approved. Well, God, that preacher doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, but he's preaching about the way. Now, he may be a sinner just like you, but he's preaching the way that I approve of God speaking. Now, whether you do not like this message or do not approve of what God's being preached, you will stand before God one day and give an account that you have heard God's way. And God's way is Jesus Christ alone. And that is it. Scratch your head, complain, mock as you will, call the police, I don't care. God said it is my way and my way is Jesus Christ Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Any access to the Father is by me, and that's the word of Jesus. And you will stand account one day with what you have done with the message of the gospel, whether you believe or you reject it. And God doesn't care what you think. God never asks for your opinion. God says, I said that man go all the world and preach the gospel. What are you going to do with the gospel? It's your free will. Coming upon a few days. 31 years ago, I received Christ as my Savior. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. My name was written down the last book of life. What'd you do? I did nothing. Come on, you had to do something. Yeah, I sinned. 
I was a sinner. An outright miserable sinner. I couldn't even sin well. I'll tell you something else I was. 31 years ago, I was unrighteous as a Catholic. I was unrighteous living in this world 31 years ago. Had I died 31 years ago on this date, I would be in the gates of hell forever. Coming April 24th, a man sat with me with an open Bible, King James and explained to me that I was a sinner, and I was. And you don't need to know they're under the blood, so don't ask. The Bible says nothing about confessing your sins to man, confess them to Jesus. And I proclaimed April 24th, and I know I get the date messed up, but my memory. On April 24th, in 1987, in Waterford, Connecticut, in my grandmother's living room, I knelt down and I said, God, there is nothing I can do. I am condemned. I am guilty. I am a sinner. And I'm going to hell. Plain and simple. Lord, I have a problem. I don't want to go to hell. And this Bible tells me that I have the opportunity not to go to hell. And the opportunity not going to hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So April 24th, 1987, sometime in the afternoon, my heart yielded to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And I have been saved for 31 years. My name is in the last book of life for 31 years. And the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I can't lose it. Why can't I lose eternal security? Why can't I lose eternal salvation? Because I did nothing to get it. When Jesus Christ was beaten, he was beaten for me. And in my iniquities was he bruised. And in my sins was he tortured. And because the sinner that I was, he was nailed to that cross. And because of the assurance I have of the salvation by Jesus Christ, he came out of that tomb three days and three nights later. I have the assurance, I have the way, I have the truth, and I have the life, and it's in Jesus Christ, and my name is written down in the heavenly register of the Lamb's Book of Life, and yours can be written there too. God says, come now. God is saying, come. Let us. That's you and God. This Saturday morning, God is saying, come now. Come to me through Jesus. And I will save you. Not me, God. You can come to Jesus Christ today and be saved. And when you die, you will not go to hell. You will not burn. You'll get total opposite. You'll get a new body. No more pain. No more sorrow.
You see, the positiveness of God through Jesus is eternal life. Wonderful. The nakedness is if you reject Jesus Christ, it's hell. Now you may think your life is hell. This life ain't could compare to you when you open up into the gates of hell. You're not okay without Jesus Christ. You're not safe. You will not want to be into the eternal life without Jesus Christ. And the Bible speaks of an afterlife. You're just going on living like you're running a race. And whatever that aim is that you have, that's good. But will you stop in this race and get some refreshing water? Will you stop and grab hold the water of life? And there is no sin that God cannot save you from. Check out the sin that the Lord met that woman at the well with the water of life. John chapter 4. Read John chapter 4 with prayer. The Gospel of John chapter 4 with prayer. Read it. Are you tired of failing? Are you tired of alcohol and drugs and money? Are you not satisfied? Is there hopelessness in your race? Is there no joy or the joy is temporal? And Jesus said, come on to me all ye that are heavy laden. Come and place those sins upon Jesus. It's not to be taken orally. It's to be taken by faith. Faith in God who came and became a man and God. And suffered and died that you may have eternal life. An eternal life without pain and misery is a life in Jesus Christ. And only in Jesus Christ. Death is coming if you die without Jesus Christ. You are condemned. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nowhere does it say go to this church, go to that church, give this money, give that money, uh, be baptized, be dunk sized, be money eyes, give to charity. Nowhere for your eternal hope. Well, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He can lighten your day, ma'am. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be enlightened. And it won't destroy your day. It'll brighten your day. It'll give you hope. It'll give you joy. It'll give you peace according to the Holy Spirit and the gift thereof. Taste of the Lord and see that He's good. This world is wicked. This world is miserable. Why keep living it the way it wants you to live? Why will you not step out and put your faith and belief in Jesus Christ? If 
this preaching it makes you miserable all day, what are you going to do in eternity when God is right and you are wrong? What are you going to do when your relief is not found in hell because there is no alcohol, there is no drugs, there is no hope in the flames of fire, and yet the hope of Jesus Christ is a new body. No pain, no sorrow, joy unspeakable and full of glory. by putting your faith and trust in Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's a powerful message. It makes people run. It makes them angry. And it's a message that put Jesus on the cross. What crimes did Jesus get to be nailed to the cross? I'll tell you what crimes he did. I sinned. I was in iniquity. I failed God. I was unrighteous. I did not meet God's means. Oh, you mean what, I, what did Jesus do? I'll tell you what he did. He was righteous, he was sinless, and he preached the gospel. He preached the word of God. And he got a cross. Because you and me are the guilty ones. We are guilty. And the Roman government declared Jesus four times. I find no fault in him. Oh, brother, you can find fault in me even as a saved Christian. And if you are lost and never trusted in Christ, oh, boy, can I find sin in you. Will you bring that sin to Jesus and be washed? Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And by Jesus Christ, are you the only way to be saved? There is nothing else. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Acts 4.12 If it's not the name of Jesus Christ, God, then it's not hope. It's not salvation. It's damnation. 